The Avengers, Earth's Last Alliance. Chapter 4. United They Stand. Captain America, the almighty Thor, and Spider-Man all landed to see Green Goblin with a bunch of Hydra soldiers. Now what, Cap? Spider-Man asked. Take down these Hydra soldiers. Leave that Goblin dude to me. Captain America ordered. <laughs> with pleasure. Thor muttered with a grin. Thor then jumped forward and slammed her hammer on the ground, sending a thunder shock wave rippling through the street, knocking every soldier off their feet. Spider-Man jumped up and swung on a web. He swung over the horde of Hydra soldiers and started blasting at Spider-Man. He shot two webs, both hit the ground, and then he slung shot himself to the ground, releasing a surge of bioelectricity from his body as he hit the ground, the electricity striking the soldiers. Thor threw Mjolnir and it slammed into a soldier, then Thor held out her hand and Mjolnir came flying back. She caught it, just in time to swing it at another Hydra soldier who was in mid-swing with an energy blade. Her swing sent the soldier flying back. Spider-Man webbed up at several soldiers. He then pulled them in and they came flying towards him. Spider-Man flipped backwards and kicked the soldier in mid-flip. Captain America flew at Green Goblin at high speed, who floated higher up. He threw several bombs down at Captain America as he started flying towards the Goblin. He shielded his face with his vibranium shield and the bombs exploded on impact. Then Captain America flew up, spun around and swung the shield, slamming it into Green Goblin. Both of them threw punches and kicks until Captain America managed to kick Green Goblin in the chest, sending him flying off the glider. Green Goblin laughed as he fell. Captain America flew down and caught the goblin, then the goblin revealed his gold crystal band, and it started glowing, and his eyes went from green to gold. What is this? Captain America asked. Green Goblin then grabbed his shield and it started to shimmer gold. Captain America turned around and threw the shield high up into the air as possible. The energy encased around the shield and it exploded. The shield fell. It was now covered in scorch marks. Captain America turned to the Green Goblin who had a green energy ball in his hand. He planted it on Captain America's chest and it exploded, causing the captain to drop Green Goblin. As the Goblin fell, his guider came swooping beneath him and he landed on it safely, laughing manically as he did. The captain was thrown off trajectory due to the explosion and he crashed on the road, his wings folding back in. Spider-Man and Thor both rushed to his aid as he climbed out of the crash pit. Both Hydra soldiers grouped up as well. Spider-Man landed in front of the soldiers and shot a web at one of the soldiers' guns. He yanked it out of his hands, spun it around and slammed it into the soldier. Thor spun Yorn extremely fast, causing a tornado like blast to push the other soldier away. Captain America stood up and extended his wings once more, and he used one to deflect an energy blast coming from one of the soldiers. Then he spun around, and with a straight wing, he dragged it across the ground, the tip of the wing tripping up the soldier. Where did Gobby go? Spider-Man asked. I don't know, Captain America replied with a concern. Johnny Storm sat there awkwardly, twiddling his thumbs. Annie started to whistle. He then blew out a large amount of air. Are you bored, Mr. Storm? Jarvis asked. Whoa, hey, yeah, uh, hi, I forgot you're around, Jarvis. Yeah, man, where is everyone? Johnny asked. The Avengers have split up. Mr. Wilson has taken two members to handle the Green Goblin, and Miss Williams and Oclos have taken the liberty to stop a gang war that interrupted one of Mrs. Morales' speeches. Jarvis explained. Give me those coordinates, Jarvis. I can go help, Johnny blurted. Yes, sir. I do not think it's wise to intervene, though, these events, without further instructions. Jarvis advised. Dude, just let me help, Johnny insisted. A kitchen counter opened up and a communication earpiece was presented. Johnny grabbed it, put it in his ear, and he ran out of the room, pulled out his super suit, then he got dressed. Once he was dressed, he ran out onto the balcony and jumped off of it. Flame on! He called out. His entire body was engulfed in flames and the human torch flew off to aid his new team. Oclos stared at Thunderstruck. He pulled him off the ground and Oclos' eyes turned purple. Thunderstruck leaned into Oclos' face. I am going to kill you! Thunderstruck said with glee. Then suddenly Thunderstruck was stabbed in the stomach. He looked down and Oclos was holding a dagger made of pure purple energy. Thunderstruck let go of Oclos and stumbled backward. He pulled the knife out and the knife dematerialized. Oclos ran over to Ironheart and pulled her to her feet. Dude, your eyes are purple, Ironheart gasped. Wait, I've got three powers now? 
Ocklose gasped back. Thunderstruck ran at Ocklose. He held his hand out and a purple energy baseball bat formed in his hand. He swung the baseball bat, hitting Thunderstruck, sending him flying back. He crashed into a car and Ironheart cheered. Then Thunderstruck stood up and growled at him. Next time, I will end you! Thunderstruck roared. Then Thunderstruck ran off, becoming so fast no one could see him. And once again, Ocklose took a deep... Sigh in and exhale slowly, as he knew this wouldn't be the last time he would see a thunderstruck. The goons started all climbing out of their hiding spots and aiming their guns. Jarvis, status report, Ironheart ordered. The suit is standing at 67 power, Miss Williams. Jarvis replied. Yeah, that will do. Ironheart nodded. Oclo gripped his energy baseball bat and Ironheart aimed her hands out, her repulsor primed and ready. Then before anyone could do anything, a bolt of fire hit the ground. Everyone looked up to see the human torch floating there. Anyone who stays becomes a human s'more, he called out. The thugs looked at the three heroes, looked at each other, counted their bullets, then they all ran off in the other direction. Ha <laughs> ha, yeah, go. Thanks, Johnny, Ironheart said. We gotta go, the others need us. The human torch barked. Ironheart nodded and took flight. Up close, his baseball bat dematerialized. Then he closed his eyes. He took a deep breath in and remembered what Gambit taught him. Then he opened his eyes and his eyes were now green and he took flight and all three of them flew off. Jarvis, give us Cap's coordinates, Ironheart ordered. Here are the coordinates of Mr. Wilson, Miss Foster and Mr. Morales. Jarvis replied. On Ironheart's hollow screen, she could see three indicators on the map. The three of them flew off across the city to aid the other Avengers. Captain America, Thor and Spider-Man stood their ground with the Hydra soldiers, knocking them down to the ground one by one, and they finally stood there victorious. But then a wild cackling sound could be heard. Everyone looked up and saw Green Goblin flying overhead on his glider. He summoned two energy orbs and threw them at the heroes. Spider-Man shot a web at a car, ripped off the door, and flung the door at the two orbs. The two orbs in the car door collided, and they exploded. You'll never get me, heroes! <laughs> Green Goblin cackled. Suddenly, Captain America's shield hit Green Goblin in the back of the head, and then it hit the floor next to the trio. Captain America grabbed his shield and pulled it out of the ground, and everyone saw Green Goblin was hit with two repulsor beams, as Ironheart flew overhead and then landed next to the trio on the ground. Sup, yo? Ironheart cheered. What are you doing here? Spider-Man asked. Had to save your mom. Don't worry, she's safe. There's a lot to fill you in on, but right now, let's stop Goblin. Ironheart replied. Spider-Man nodded, then the human torch flew in and set several bolts of fire, which hit the green goblin. The goblin growled, then he sent a golden energy ball at the human torch. He flew to the left, dodging the attack. Then he landed on the ground and his flames diminished, as he stood next to his teammates. Glad to see you here, Johnny, Captain America said. Yeah, yeah, we all know you're just babysitting me for no goddamn reason. It's fine, we're seeing the day from this creep, the human torch barked. The green goblin summoned more golden energy balls. Then, before he could throw them, someone whistled. Everyone looked up and they saw Ocklose, his eyes quickly changing from green to orange, and his body shifted into his tiger form landing on top of the Green Goblin. The tiger wrestled the Green Goblin off of the glider, both of them crashing onto the ground. Captain America threw a shield at the glider, hitting it dead on. It started flying around manically, splitting out black smoke. Spider-Man shot two webs, caught the glider, and he guided it into the ground, and then he shot several webs that webbed up the glider to the ground. The tiger pinned the goblin to the ground, but the goblin headbutted the tiger in the head and rolled away. The tiger leapt back and made some distance, then he shifted back to Oculus. His orange eyes faded back to normal. Then Green Goblin held up his arms and made a really big golden energy orb. That is massive, Thor barked. The small ones are dangerous enough, Spider-Man gasped. The blast radius will wipe out this district within seconds and then some, Ironheart explained. Let him throw it, Ocklose muttered. Everyone looked at Ocklose, concerned, painted all over their face. Green Goblin stood there laughing and then threw the big ball at Ocklose. His eyes turned purple and in his hand, a purple energy baseball bat formed. The ball came flying at him. Ocklose took his stance and swung the bat, hitting the ball dead on. It flew far back and higher into the air. Then it exploded, filling the sky with fire and energy. 
The Avengers all cover their eyes, and Green Goblin turned around and ran off. Art closed his bat, then did he materialize. He held both hands out, and several throwing stars appeared in each hand. He threw all four shuriken. Three of them hit Green Goblin, as the other one hit the gold crystal band on his wrist, causing it to open and fall to the ground. Green Goblin dropped to the ground as well. Spider-Man jumped up quickly and webbed him up. Octopus's purple eyes faded back to normal, and his nose started bleeding. Then he passed out, and his body hit the ground hard. Norman Osborn was pushed into his cell. The guards laughing amongst themselves as how once again Norman Osborn, the almighty Green Goblin, had been thwarted by superheroes and was once again sat in a cell. So, I got you again, huh, Osborn? The criminal named Flint Marco, also known as the Sandman, grunted with a slight cackle. Actually, Marco, for once everything is going according to plan. Norman sighed as he straightened his orange jumpsuit. Please, you're a nutcase. Another criminal called out. It was Max Dillon, also known as Electro. Actually, no, this time round the plan comes from the higher power, Norman explained. Oh yeah, and what's this plan, Osborne? Flint asked, to get you two out of prison. Norman said, he sat down with a massive grin on his face. Both Flint and Max stood and leaned their arms and heads through the bars of their cells. What's the catch? Max snapped. You gotta do what you're told. Oh, and one more thing. I really hope you like the colour gold, Norman said with a grin. Both the criminals smiled with intrigue.